So it's, it's really important when we're in events like this, it's all about education, making sure not only you're picking the right tractor, but you're picking the right uh, tyre to fit to that tractor. Yeah. Often we see you know, people buy a stock tractor or they buy a, a tractor because it's got the tyres on they've always used, whereas technology's changed so much, machinery's so much heavier, implements are so much bigger that the tyres that they used to fit are no longer fit for purpose. Yeah. So it's all about education of, of fitting the right tyre that gives you the flexibility to do what you want. Especially at the moment when the fields are so waterlogged, we want to make sure we've got as big a footprint as possible, as much flexibility with pressures. I mean, if we just look at the setup we've got here, so uh, five furrow plough on the back there. When we do the way blocking on the other side, we show that actually just moving from side to side, yeah. You're moving nearly one and a half tons worth of weight from one tire onto Literally the other. Literally, just by turning the plough. Just by over. turning the plough over, you're moving at one and a half tons worth of weight. Yeah. Which means that while the plough is this side, the tire's fine. Yeah. As soon as you flip it the other side, you're overloading that tire. So right. when you're turning on a headland, yeah, you've got to put an extra. I think we're running this at um, 12 psi. With the plough on the other side, you need that to be at 18 psi to carry the weight. Right. So that's a third of a third less air yeah. than you actually need sat inside your tire. Right. So it's it's really important to think about this. You know, that's why there's more technology. That's why we try and say you want to get a tire that can hold as much air as possible. We tend a lot of people tend to get caught up on this this number here. A 38. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, I've got a 42, so I've got a big tire. Mm. You've got to look at the full number. So 650, 75, 38, 650 is your section width. Yeah. 75 is your percentage sidewall. So that is 75% of 650. Oh, 650, yeah. Half a radial and then 38 is your rim diameter. This is the most important thing on this any tire. This little number here. That tells you what load it can carry and what speed it can carry right. on this tire. We've got a new thing uh, we've just recently launched called Premium Care. So your machine dealer or even your tractor might already have that sticker on the cab. Anything that's fitted with a trellable tyre, um, scan that. We need your phone number and email address. Our local ASM will then get in touch with you and, and they will come and spend a day with you, an hour with you, with whatever they need to do with the weight blocks right. and give you advice on what you should be doing, even if you're looking at specking a new machine. If the tyre is not correct, the tyre size isn't correct, and the pressure is not correct. Yeah. And it's so, so important. We talk about it so often, but the pressure isn't, isn't you know, just uh, more comfort, more safety, more stability. Pressure means you get a wider footprint. You, know, yeah. you get a longer footprint, which gives you um, uh, traction. And then the wider the footprint is, the less soil compaction that you're going to have. So the idea is you want to run these pressures as low as you possibly can for the weight you're doing because it's going to protect your soil. And you know, we look around at the moment with the weather we're having, everywhere is waterlogged. Yeah. Yes, it's been raining a lot. Yes, we've got drainage issues, but also we have very, very high, high compacted soil in the UK. And it's because we've been running incorrect pressures for so many years. Yeah. But the technology exists now and, and the tyres exist now to allow you to drop that pressure down. Yeah. And if you've got low comp compaction, it means you're going to be saving time, money. You're going to get bigger yields. Um, get the pressures right you're going to save we do a, a, a test you know a 200 meter track we're saving sort of 330 seconds worth of time now you put that over a, a 400 hectare farm that's a day's labor saved it's massive, isn't it? and then it's the bit you you can't really quant quantify but it is the yield you will get a better quality you will get a higher yield if yeah. your soil isn't compacted that's it we move on to the other one so these two little little letters here again industry stranded the vf that stands for very high flexion. That gives you 40% more load carrying capacity at the same pressure. Right. Or the same load up to 40% less pressure. Right. So you get a lot more flexibility yeah. with that. Um, whether that's road work, whether that's field work, it means that you can, you can carry a, a higher load with the same size tire. Because again, you look here, it's all about that speed. Here it is. Again. So 182D, so you're carrying a lot more load, but you're, you can carry that at, a, at that 40% less pressure. Yeah. Which gives you much wider footprint. Um, so you're getting much more traction into the ground. So again, the more traction you get, the less the, the tractor's having to work, the less slippage you're getting, therefore the more fuel efficient you're going to well, be. Presumably. Absolutely, because ultimately when you're on a road, 
because of the size of these lugs, we know they, you get brushing mm. backwards and forwards. When rubber brushes, it generates heat. Yeah. When rubber gets hot, it likes to melt. Yeah. <laughs> Not a great Nature thing, of the beast. <laughs> but unfortunately it is what it is. So the more we can reduce that, and that's why we have it at Trellable, we have this other, which is unique to us, this progressive traction secondary lug here. So the, uh, the original idea of that was to how we can get more traction in the field. So this progressively gives traction to the tyre. So it's not all sitting on that one lug. Right. So that lug hasn't got to dig into the field. It's like a double lug hard. almost. Yeah. Exactly. So you're not having to get as much depth into the soil to grab the traction that you were getting before. Um, it also acts as another angle. So you see these what we have as our yeah. in interlug terraces, they're called. So as the tyre rotates, they flex and crack the mud right. as it's rotating. So it keeps the nice clean footprint because obviously, yeah. again, with the conditions we've got at the moment, these tend to get full very quickly. As soon as they get full, you're running on slicks, you're using traction, That's using it. more fuel, you're wasting time. So it gives you an extra angle there that, that flexes as the tire rotates, cracking the mud off. And also it just stiffens up that, that base because yeah. it goes out a little bit wider. So again, on the road, you don't get that brushing effect as okay, much. Yeah. Therefore, you're so not this building. Isn't moving backwards and exactly. forwards as much. So you're not generating up as much thicker heat. thicker at the bottom there. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things we're noticing more and more at the moment is when it comes to ballasting. Um, again, 20, 30 years ago, it used to be you use the ballast when you're in the field and then you drop it when you go on the road. Not the case anymore because we're working on four wheel drive tractors that we still need to make sure we get that 60-40 split, whether you're on in the field or in the road. Yeah. So whatever you put on the back, you've got to put on the front as well to make sure you keep your tractor nice and balanced. Otherwise, what you're saving on tyre wear on this one, mm. you're you giving to that one, which is two or three times more expensive. So, you know, again, we'll give you all this kind of advice of how, you know, the correct running conditions, what weights you should be putting on the front to balance it against the back, depending on what, um, what implements you've got. Yeah. You've got working that machine, whether that's just got one job on the farm, whether it's got three or four. And again, it's something that is, is forgotten. Um, you know, implements are getting bigger. Yeah. Tractors are getting heavier. You know, plows are getting heavier and bigger and more powerful, which is why it's so important to understand what weight is being put and what stress is being put on the tyre before you make the decision. You know, yeah. You've really got to understand what work that machine is going to be doing so you can make the correct tyre choice. And it might cost you a little bit more when you're specking the tractor, but it's going to save you fuel, it's going to save you time, it's going to save your soil, and it's going to save downtime. And it's so important not, not to get hung up on that first excuse me, that first black and white price. Yeah. It, it's look at the overall efficiency of, of what you want that machine to do and, and build in the fuel, the price of fuel and build in the, the, the price of time and build in the potential yield yeah. that you can get from, from correct setup. The more people are starting to take interest in, okay, what else do I need to do? What yeah. technology exists to make this better for me so that I can actually get into my fields in these kind of conditions? Um, and with you know sustainability targets that we've got now, um, you know it's important that we understand what we're doing to our soil and, and how we can protect our soil for, for future generations. Yeah.